So in this video, we continue our discussion on discrete random variables. Uh, in particular, we talk a little bit more about uh, probability mass function, PMF, and also we introduce independent random variables. So let's quickly review what we discussed last time. Uh, a random variable is a real valued variable whose value is determined by an underlying random experiment. So equivalently, you can define a random variable as a function from the sample space to the real number. So a random variable x is a function from the sample space to the set of real numbers. Basically, what you do, you have a random experiment. It has a sample space, there are, which is a set of all possible outcomes. Um, and then to each outcome, you assign a number. And this is a function, and it's your random variable. Now, we define the range of a random variable x. Uh, we show it by range of x, or r sub x as a set of all possible values of x. So x can take real values. If uh, we look at all those possible values, we call it the range of x. And then we defined uh, discrete random variables. We said that a random variable x is discrete if its range is a countable set. So basically what it means is that you can list all the elements in the range, x1, x2, and so on. So when you have a discrete random variable, we said that you can define probability mass function, which basically tells you the probability of each value in the range. Uh, more specifically, if x is a discrete random variable with range uh, x1, x2, x3, and so on, then uh, the probability mass function is basically probability that x is equal to xk for any uh, xk in the range. And we show it by using this notation. This uh, px of xk, which is the probability that the random variable x is equal to xk. So this is a function of xk. So this is what we discussed last time. So let's look at a simple example. So let x be a discrete random variable with range uh, r sub x equals 1, 2, 3, 4. So these are the possible values of x. And we know px of 1 equals px of 2 equals 1 over 3. And px of 4 is equal to 1 over 6. And the question is, what is px uh, of 3? And also, we want to know prob probability that x is larger than or equal to 2 and less than 4. So I suggest that you solve this uh, problem before watching the rest of the video. So uh, let's look at the solution. Uh, first of all, the problem tells us that px of 1, px of 2 is equal to 1 over 3, and px of 4 is equal to 1 over 6. And we want to know what is px of 3. Now, x can take only four values, right? 1, 2, or 3, or 4. So what we know is px of 1, if we sum px of 1 plus px of 2 plus px of 3 plus px of 4, this value must be equal to 1. This is the probability that x is either 1, or is either equal to 1, or 2, or 3, or 4. And because uh, the range of x is basically 1, 2, 3, 4, it can take only one of these values, so the summation must be equal to 1. And because this is 1 over 3, 1 over 3, and px of 4 is given by 1 over 6, we conclude that px of 3 must be equal to 1 over, sorry, 1 over 6. So this is probability that x is equal to 3. And part b, we are asked to find probability that x is equal is larger than or equal to 2 and less than 4, which means that we are asking what is the probability that x is be belongs to set the set 2 and 3. So we want to know what is the probability that x either is either 2 or 3. Well, simply we write this as px of 2, probability that x is equal to, equal to 2, plus probability that x is equal to 3. And this is uh, px of 2 is equal to 1 over 3, px of 3 is equal to 1 over 6, we just found it. And this becomes 1 over 2. So from this simple example, we can kind of summarize some properties of the probability mass function. Basically, if 
you have a probability mass function px of xk or px of x this is a probability so it must be between 0 and 1 and also if you sum over all possible values of x the sum must be equal to 1 and more generally if you want to find probability that x belongs to a set a all you need to do is find this sum the summation for over all x's that belongs to that set px of x so these are the important properties of the probability mass function for discrete random variables okay so now i would like to talk about independent random variables so in real life uh, we usually need to work with more than one random variable uh, when you have a problem you usually have uh, maybe random variable x random variable y random variable z and so on and in a general scenario these random variables could be dependent in other words if you know the value of one of them uh, that might give you information about the value of others and we will discuss how to deal with these kind of situations more in detail later on however today i would like to talk about a very specific case where random variables are independent in other words knowing the value of one of them does not give us any information about uh, uh, the values of others so independent random variables is very similar to independent events that we discussed before so let me give you an example suppose that i look at two random experiments the first experiment is that i roll a die and i obtain a random variable the the value of a random variable x i define the random variable x as a result of my uh, experiment which is rolling a die so x could be either one two three four five or six and in fact uh, if this is a fair die you say that probability that x is equal to 1 is equal to probability that x is equal to 2 is equal to probability that x is equal to 3 and so on and all of them are equal to 1 over 6 so if this is one random uh, variable suppose that I also define another random variable y let's say there is a soccer match tomorrow that I'm interested in uh, so I define the random variable y as the number of goals scored in the soccer game uh, so the range of the random variable y can be y could be 0 1 2 and so on so it could be 0 goals one goal two goals and so on and suppose that based on statistical analysis uh, we uh, can estimate that probability that there is no goal in the game is equal to let's say 1 over 3 suppose that we have that information so I have two random variables now I ask you a question I ask you what is the probability that y is equal to 0 given that x is equal to let's say 3 so I roll a die the value of my die is gonna be 3 is 3 I observe it and then I ask you how do you update your probability what is the probability that y equals 0 so you would say that well this extra information you know it's nothing here it doesn't give me any uh, information about the value of y so you say that this is simply probability that y equals 0 which is again 1 over 3 and you're right basically what you're saying here is that x and y are independent x uh, random variables x and ran the random variables x and y are independent so two random variables are independent if knowing the value of one of them does not give us any information about the value of the other one now here if I ask you what is probability that y equals 0 and suppose that I don't know the value of x and x equals to 3 what do you say well you would say that these are two independent events remember for two independent events probability of a and b is equal to probability of a times probability of b so you would say that this is simply probability that y equals 0 times probability that x equals 3 and we know that probability that x y equals 0 is 1 over 3 probability that x is equal to 3 is 1 over 6 so this is 1 over 18. so we can provide this general definition for independent random variables so consider two discrete random variables x and y this is the definition for discrete uh, independent random variables uh, we will see that similar definition can be extended to uh, continuous random variables and so on so we say that x and y are independent if probability that x is equal to x and y equals to y so comma always means and is equal to probability that x is equal to x 
y equals to y. In other words, the two events x equals x and y equals y are independent events. And more generally, if the two random variables are independent, if probability that x belongs to a set and y belongs to another set is simply the product of the probabilities. So in general, if I ask you, uh, you know, what is the probability that x is between 1 and 3 and uh, y, uh, you know, belongs to the set, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, and so on, you just multiply the probabilities. These two events are independent. Sometimes it's very easy to argue that two uh, random variables are independent because there is no physical interactions between them, such as the example that I just gave you. You know, you roll a die and then you look at the goals in a soccer match. Or you roll a die once and then you roll a die another time. Assuming that the, uh, there is no memory, die does not have any memory, uh, there is no reason that uh, the value of the first uh, observation of uh, you know, rolling a die impacts the value of the second one. And in other situations, uh, it is not that obvious, and we need uh, to basically check if these conditions hold. Okay, so let's look at an example. So I roll two dice and observe two numbers, x and y. So x could be 1, 2, 3, up to 6. y could be 1, 2, up to 6. So I have uh, several questions for you, and I suggest that you solve this uh, before watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's look at the solution. First of all, uh, you know, x could be any value between 1 and 6, so range of x, and similarly y, range of y is basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And assuming the dice are fair, Probability that x is equal to 1 is equal to probability that x is equal to 2 up to px equals to 6, which is 1 over 6. And that's similarly for probability that y is equal to 1 is equal to probability that y equals to 2 and up to probability that y is equal to 6. So we can summarize this as writing this way. px of k is equal to 1 over 6 for k in 1, 2, up to 6 and zero else. Sometimes we write the probability mass function like this. We say that the probability that x is equal to uh, k is zero for any value that is not in the range. So, and we can show it by this diagram here. So this is, let's say, real line, and these are all values. So the probability mass function can only take six values for x. So let's say this is 1 over 6, 1 over 6, 1 over 6, 1 over 6, and 1 over 6. And similarly for y, okay, so the first part was easy. The second part, these two random variables are independent. So we can write this as probability that x equals to 2 times probability that y equals to 6. And you must mention that why can you write this? Because x and y are independent. And you know, probability that x is equal to 2 is 1 over 6, probability that y, over, y equals 6 is equal to 1 over 6, so this is 1 over 36. Part C is asking, what's the probability that x is larger than 3, given that y equals to 2? So suppose that we observe the value of y, but we don't know the value of the x. And the question is, what's the probability that x is larger than 3, given that we know y equals to 2? Now, you would say that, again, these two random variables are independent, so this extra information you know, does not help us at all. We just write this as probability that x is equal to, x is larger than 3, again, because x and y are independent. And simply, probability that x is larger than 3 is the same as probability that x uh, is either 4, 5, or 6, which is px of 4 plus px of 5 plus px of 6, and this is simply 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, which is 1 over 2. Okay, now the last part is a little trickier. So we define the random variable z, a new random variable, which is x plus y. And the question is, we want to find the range and PMF of z. 
So let me write down the question again here. So the last part, part D, we define z equals x plus y. So x is a random variable, y is a random variable. So if we add them, we obtain a new random variable, z. And we want to find what is its range and its uh, PMF. First of all, the range is easy, right? Because y, x can be 1, 2, up to 6. y can be 1, 2, over up to 6. So z, what are the possible values for z? If x is 1, y is 1, then z equals 2. Then z might be 3, 4, and up to the largest value for z is going to be 12, which happens when both x and y are equal to 6. Now, to find PMF of z, we need to find pz of 2, pz of 3, up to pz of 12, right? These are the values of the, in the range. So let's do that. What is probability that z is equal to 2? Well, that is the probability that z equals to 2, which is probability that x plus y equals to 2. Now, x plus y can be uh, equal to 2 only if x equals to 1 and y equals to 1. And we know how to do this. Because x and y are independent, this is simply probability that x is equal to 1 times probability that y equals to 1. And again, we have this. This is 1 over 6. This is 1 over 6. So this is 1 over 36. So let's find the, the next value, pz of 3. What is that? This is probability that z equals to 3, which is probability that x is equal x, sorry, x plus y is equal to 3. Now, when x plus y can be equal to 3. There are some possibilities. One possibility is that x equals 1 and y equals to 2, or we could have x equals 2 and y equals 1, right? So these are disjoint events, so we can simply write this as probability that x equals 1, y equals to 2, plus probability that x equals to 2 and y equals to 1. Again, we can find these probabilities because x and y are independent. This is probability that x equals to 1 times probability that y equals to 2 plus probability that x equals to 2 times probability that y equals to 1. So this is 1 over 6, 1 over 6, this is y, 1 over 6, 1 over 6. So the total probability becomes uh, 2 over 36. And you get the idea. Again, if you want to find probability of that z equals to 4, this is probability that x plus y equals to 4. This is probability that x is equal to 1, y equals to 3, plus probability that x is equal to 2, y equals to 2, plus probability that x equals to 3, y equals to 1. And each of these probabilities is 1 over 36, so the total probability is 3 over 36. And you can basically continue this process. And if you do that, you will obtain that pz of 5 is equal to uh, 4 over 36, pz of 6 is equal to 5 over 36, pz of 7 is equal to 6 over 36, and then pz of 8 again is equal to 5 over 36, and pz of 9 is going to be 4 over 36, and uh, pz of 10 is going to be 3 over 36, pz of 11 is going to be 2 over 36, and finally pz of 12 is going to be 1 over 36. And it's always to, it's a good idea to check that if you add them, you must get 1. So pz of uh, 2 plus pz of 3 up to pz of 12 you uh, must get 1. And if you do that, you see that if you add all of these numbers, you obtain 1. Okay, thank you.